Chapter 1. There were many struggles being gay in an unforgiving time. Being gay in the U.S. used to be tantamount to being the donkey at a pin-the-tail-on-the-donkey party game. With a target on your back, you had to navigate the confusing waters of being gay and then do so in a world that was out to get you at every turn. With the dangerous potentials of homophobia, being gay was simply a deadly prospect for many. For women, being gay was an even worse experience, seeing as they already got the short end of the stick when it came to being treated right, men targeted lesbians for rape and abuse. It was a roller coaster of emotions and persecutions to deal with, not to mention that in conservative America, no family would support their child or family member being gay. It was a daunting task to be both a woman and gay in conservative America. At a time when most women were still coming to terms with their newfound sexuality and having to cope with being and feeling different, there was surprisingly little help for them and even less reference to compare how they felt. Frankly, being gay wasn't a novel idea. No, but it was always frowned upon, and as such, there was no support system for gays and lesbians alike. Because of the fear of persecution, a lot of gays preferred to be in the closet about their sexuality. But this era of confusion and persecution was not going to last forever. As the world grew and more and more people in and around the U.S. got a new perspective on being gay, there was some hope for change on the horizon. Chapter 2 As awareness grew, there was more acceptance of the LGBTQ. Slowly but surely, as the decades passed, there would be an increase in gay references in the media, from androgynous fashion to feminine males on magazines and TV screens. Though not as bold as it is today, there has been a heavy gay presence in the media for longer than most people care to admit. Thankfully, the presence of gays slowly grew as the years passed and media evolved. Between 1950 to 1960, we see that more people are emboldened in their life's choices and are accepting themselves for who and what they are. A sort of revolution, the groundwork for which were inadvertently getting laid, the LGBTQ had begun to take root in open society. There were also more people accepting their sexualities and finding ways to live with it. The path to getting accepted by society was a treacherous one filled with lies, deceit, and pain. Because of homophobia and deep-ingrained narrative about the LGBTQ, it was hard at first to really integrate into society. They were mostly shunned, and people avoided them because they thought they were unnatural. It wasn't a rosy path to getting accepted. Society was, and still is, unsure how to treat gays. But with modernization came clarity, and with this clarity came love, acceptance, and unity. More and more gays were given a fair shot at opportunities they were denied earlier. But make no mistake, it wasn't a result of waiting it out. There was a lot of fighting involved, a refusal to simply lay down and take the criticism. Hence, we see that more and more gays refused to be pushed around and demanded fair treatment. Chapter 3. It is important to find your voice when the world is trying to silence you. It was no longer enough that people were or pretended to be comfortable with having gay friends, relatives, or neighbors. There was a need for a proper legal acknowledgement of them and their rights. They deserved to be treated just like everyone else, as humans. Without acknowledging their humanity and their human rights, there was no hope for better treatment. At the core of the gay movement was the desire for equal human rights. Anything less was unacceptable. 
There was hope at last, as more people were accepting their sexualities, there would emerge some who would become very vocal about their rights and how they'd like to be treated. For the many that were still unsure of their places in society, they had a voice, a face that represented them and gave them a sense of pride. Thankfully, those who were demanding better for the gays were not alone in the fight. They were fully supported. For as many that were too afraid to speak up or exist freely, they had several symbols to draw inspiration and strength from. America was forefront in the fight for the gay rights movement, from parades to protests that would cement their place and have them taken seriously. The voices that were raised in protest were from prominent figures in society, and it inspired others less known to join them. Slowly but surely, it was no longer a few people, but a multitude of voices demanding better treatment, jobs, movie roles, health care, etc. The bottom line remained the same, regardless of the fight, gender involved, or mode of protest, to be treated as humans and with respect. The voices were little on their own, but together they would kickstart a revolution. Growing up, I gradually began to discover that I was different, besides my color, and I thought I was the only one in the world. I remember when I first discovered that things were not right. Sexually, I wanted to kill myself. Paul Phillips Chapter 4 the 70s finally brought some form of liberty. With the 70s came the advent of disco music and disco clubs. These clubs would become safe havens for a lot of closet gays and an integral part of the general acceptance of gays into society. Disco was basically music for and of expression, and the disco clubs were pure representations of them. This made it perfect for anyone to freely be themselves without judgment or fear. Disco could not have come at a better time than in the 70s. It was almost providence. The 70s brought not only freedom in music, but an increase in the number of gays who refused to be hidden under the cover of a straight relationship. The usual routine with gay men and women was to get into heterosexual relationships with some leading to marriage. More gays were beginning to exit the shadows and attempt to live freer lives. These partners were simply placeholders, a distraction for any prying eyes. To avoid people having any suspicions about their true sexualities, gay men and women would enter into long-term heterosexual relationships and sometimes even marriages. This led to a lot of sneaking around and, of course, brood scandals. A common practice among the gays was hitching or dating a partner and engaging in a heterosexual relationship as a cover. This is where disco became relevant. The secrecy of the clubs helped shelter the secret lives of many gays who sought a safe place to live freely and meet other gays. It also helped that there was a lot of drugs and wanton, unprotected sex. Chapter 5. There was a stigma that linked being gay with having HIV, AIDS. There was a growing number of gays who were more open about their sexualities and who chose to explore this newfound freedom with as many partners as possible. But therein lies the problem. With the anonymity and secrecy that both these clubs and their customers operated, it was difficult to know the health status of their multiple sex partners. The wanton secrecy made it difficult to ascertain the health statuses of the multiple sex partners. When HIV first hit, the victims weren't gays. Rather, they were people with low platelet counts who benefited from plasma donations from Haiti. These donations were tainted with the deadly virus, but the symptoms and sudden decline of health was disregarded, but some studied it closely in the meantime. Blood donations from Haiti were the cause of widespread HIV infections in the U.S. 
but this disease somehow made its way into the oversexed, underprotected scene of underground disco clubs. Such an environment was perfect for it to flourish. With zero precautions or protections, a lot of gays were contracting the virus by the mid-1970s. This would lead to it getting the nickname the gay virus. Since a lot of sufferers were gay, HIV was named the gay virus. Being gay in the U.S. and Europe simply became so much harder. You were persecuted for being the carrier of a disease threatening to wipe out all of mankind, and you also had to battle with being a castaway at the same time. Today, though, there is less risk from contracting the virus. There are drugs and treatments that ensure a healthy life for you and your partners. The stigma of the gay virus may have left, but society isn't fully open to gays as yet. Did you know? In July 1961, Illinois became the first state to decriminalize homosexuality by repealing their sodomy laws. Chapter 6. Being gay today affects politics in a lot of ways. With the rapid development today, it is not strange to assume that mindsets and ideas would follow suit as well. Today, unlike when it was almost a crime against the state to be gay, there is way less persecution and judgment. There are new rules, new standards set, that make it safe for each and every marginalized group to live freely. Modern times are much fairer to the LGBTQ, with better laws holding people accountable. In modern times, there is such a thing as political correctness. This means that people were no longer allowed to use any derogatory terms or treat people without respect. This fit perfectly into the struggles of the gays who had fought for equality and better treatment. Politics plays a major role today, ensuring there is better treatment for the gays. In the political sphere today, the rights and needs of the gay community is an integral part of politics and government as a whole. The LGBTQ are no longer a minute, shy, and afraid minority. They are now a healthy and buoyant demographic, able to affect the choice of leadership and even vote an LGBTQ candidate into power. Politics has become a tool for monumental change through governance and lawmaking. Far from the dark past that saw the gays suffer much in the form of stigmatization, segregation, and condemnation, there is a better future thanks to the fervent determination of those who have come before who demanded better from society. Today, there's more gays in the media, openly, that is, and even more gays in politics, making laws and reviewing the ones that were made to oppress them. Conclusion When we see the proud colors of the LGBTQ today, we forget the dark history behind it. We fail to recognize that for every flag we see raised high, someone paid for that freedom, died for it oftentimes. The LGBTQ have been the target for oppression and persecution in the form of violent crimes for decades, and it was becoming a problem. As we are taken through the years, in the book's timestamp fashion, Eric is able to silence everything, his voice, the reader's thoughts, and just let the person giving the account steal the minds of the readers away to another world, a harsher time when it wasn't such a proud thing to be gay. We see the growth from times when the gays were so ashamed and unsure what they were going through that they were forced into heterosexual relationships, and we also see where the gays had to willingly enter into these relationships themselves. Some did it because they were confused, whilst others were trying to protect their public image by appearing straight. We also see how more gays began to demand better treatment and more acceptance into society. We see the rallies and the parades in defiance of public opinions. 
We are taken through the gruesome era of the HIV plague and how difficult it was to be gay in that time. Finally, in a sort of climax of the story, the reader is made to exhale in relief as the journey finally ends with a win for the LGBTQ in today's world. Try this. Treat everyone as you would yourself and as you would want to be treated. Nobody's sexuality is an attack on your way of life. Learn to be more compassionate.